In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to manage any online application you receive and how to process adoptions and fosters and track all of your application data using the Fetstablish software. To do this, you're going to want to click on My Applications and go to the Applications section of your dashboard. Anytime someone submits an online form, it is going to show up in the Applications section of your dashboard. Our system is designed so that whether you have a very complex process or a very simple uh, adoption or foster review process, you're going to be able to track anything and everything using this system. So you'll notice at the top that we have these different tabs. So I'm going to briefly explain the, uh, these tabs, and then I'm going to show you how to actually change the status of the applications, assign tasks to staff members for reviewing the applications, and how to actually finalize an adoption and a foster in the system. In the upper left hand side you're going to notice a search. Uh, the purpose of this search is to actually filter down the list of applications so if you're looking for a specific pet or a specific applicant name you can actually type in that pet or applicant name up here and it will instantly bring up all applications associated with that name. Uh, just for example I'm going to type in Ali and when I do that you're going to see everything disappear except the record for Ali. Now, moving on to the tabs, you'll notice we have a bunch of different tabs up here. So just to briefly explain all of them, the All tab is going to show you any single application that you have in the system. So it actually combines all the applications that are currently placed in each individual tab up top, and it combines them all into one. The Pending tab is going to list any application that is in Initial Review, Home Visit, or additional screening. If the application is denied, it will show up in the Denied tab. One thing to note is that any applicant you add to the Denied tab will actually be put on your Do Not Adopt list and they will be added as a Do Not Adopt contact in your contact section. On the On Hold tab, you have all your applications that are on hold. Uh, as you can see, you can, you're able to put a reason. Uh, and you may notice sometimes that uh, applications automatically get moved to this section. Uh, and the pet is removed from the application. Uh, we do explain how automation works in our How Automation Works tutorial. Uh, please check it out. I definitely recommend you uh, look at it, especially for those of you who are just new to the software and looking to see how the applications and all the automation in the Petstablish system works. The Approve tab is for any application that you set to the approved status. Adopted is going to be any application that's an adoption application that is set to status finalized. And fostered is going to be any foster application that is set to status finalized. And of course returned is any application that has been returned. Uh, so if a pet has been adopted and you are in the adopted tab and you go to actions and you return the pet, that application will get moved to returned and the pet will become available again in the system. Uh, and just to reiterate, the Adopted tab and the Foster tab is actually going to be listing all pets that are currently adopted and all pets that are currently fostered, along with their adopters and fosters information. Archives is a special tab. Uh, this is more of a trash bin. So let's say you accidentally add an application to the system and it's a mistake or someone uh, fills out an online form and it's a uh, bogus information or a bogus form. So if you don't want that application in your system, simply go to Actions, click Review on the application you want to get rid of, and click the Archive Application button. Uh, you're even able to write in a reason for the archive, and once you do that and you click Save Changes, it will actually move that to your archive folder. Uh, if you have an archived application and you want to return it to its original state, you can simply go to Actions, Change Status, and move it back to Initial Review. So now that you've seen what the different tabs mean and how they work, I'm now going to show you how to actually process the application in the system, uh, change the status of an application, assign a pet to applications, or change pets associated with applications, and finalize adoptions and fosters. So anytime you want to change the status of an application, there's two ways to do this. Uh, one of them you've already seen. Uh, you can go to the Actions button next to the application you want to change, scroll down to Change Status, and set the appropriate status for the application. 
The other way to do this is by going to click review on the application and then scrolling down to the bottom and changing the status here. Uh, once you select the status, you can click change status and you will see the page will refresh and the status of the application will be updated. In terms of adding a pet to an application or assigning a pet to an application, uh, in this case there's no pet assigned to this application, but to do that you can simply select the pet from the drop-down list and click Save. One thing to note is that in this drop-down list you will notice that there is a pet listed as unknown. The purpose of having this pet in there is sometimes applicants don't know what pet they're interested in, so if that's the case they can actually select that they don't know, meaning they're going to select the unknown pet, and when that happens and the unknown pet is selected, it will look like this in the main applications dashboard. So now that you've seen how to change the status of an application, uh, there's only a couple more things to go over in this section. So for any organization, you're actually able to create your own checklist items, which you can actually add notes to and upload documents to. So for example, in the initial review, you may want them to upload a form for taxes. And once you do that and you get that form, you can actually upload it. And once you upload it, it will always stay attached to this application record. You'll always have a history of any staff member that made a note. So, for example, if they called the applicant and everything checked out, they can write that. And you can see the staff member who wrote the note, the date it was done, and then you could even mark this checklist item as complete, letting you know that this step has been completed in the review process. These are all the notes. This is all the information. To set up these checklist items, you could simply go into Applications, go to Actions, click Application Review and Finalization Items, and you can enter in the title of the checklist item here, the section you want it showing up in, and the application type you want it associated with. So if you have an adoption application, this would be an adoption application checklist item. Uh, and you'll see down here you have all your adoption ones uh, and all your foster ones. So these are going to be on your adoption forms. These are going to be on your foster forms. Some of you are probably wondering, someone submits an online application, where is the actual form located? So to show you that, uh, I'm basically going to take you to an online form that's been submitted. And if you go to Actions and click Review, you will actually see the full application located here. And you can also click the Download Application button at the top which will actually download a PDF of the application filled out to your computer. Uh, another way to do this and to get these PDFs automatically sent to you, uh, if you go to Manage Forms and you enter in emails into this field, anytime someone fills out that specific application, who, whichever emails enter into the field will receive a PDF of the filled out application as well. So now that you've seen how to review an application, how to add checklist items, and how to change an application status. I'm now going to show you how to finalize an adoption or foster in the system. So there's a couple of ways to do this. The first, uh, if you have a pending application for a pet and the pet gets adopted, to finalize the application, you can scroll down to the application. In this case, we'll go to ACES, go to Actions, scroll down to Change Status, and move the status to finalize. Now if this is an adoption application, then the application will get moved to the adopted tab and the pet status will be changed to adopted in the system. Another way to finalize an application is by clicking actions, going into review, and scrolling down to the bottom and moving the status to finalized here and clicking change status. Now again, uh, this will actually process the adoption in the system. One thing you need to be careful of is let's say you have two pets assigned to an application. If you click finalize and you save the status as finalized, both pets will be processed as adopted in the system. Two applications will actually be moved to the applications tab and both of these pet statuses will be changed to adopted. So you got to be careful when doing this. If uh, someone's interested in three pets, but they only end up wanting one, you need to deselect it from the menu first and then click save. And when you do that, you can then process the adoption for ACE. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and actually finalize it just to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to scroll down here, finalize the application, click change status. 
A couple things to note, anytime someone fills out an online form or you finalize an application, we actually send them an automated email uh, letting them know that their application has been finalized and you're actually able to customize uh, this message that pops up. I'll show you where to do that in a second. But once you finalize the message and click send email, you're then going to be brought to this screen where you can actually upload documents and attachments that you want the adopter to have. And just so you're aware, uh, included in that email that you saw earlier is also a link for the adopter or the applicant to log in and create uh, an account if they choose to do so. It's optional. Uh, and once they're logged in, they can see any documents that you upload here for their pet, along with their pet's microchip information. And uh, if they want, they can register the pet's microchip, or if you registered the chip for them already, they can log in and edit the information. Now, once you upload the documents, you can set the adoption date uh, to whatever you'd like, whatever day they took the pet home, and click Finalize Application. Uh, you'll notice that you're able to register the microchip. Um, for more information on our microchip program, uh, we do have a tutorial on that as well. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to click Register Later. And once that happens, this application gets moved to Finalized. ACE gets moved to Adopted. And if you look in the Application section and you click on the Adopted tab, you will see, if I type in ACE, that ACE is located here. It was adopted and fostered on this date and you can see all of the adopters information. Uh, just to show you what it looks like in the pet section, type in ACE. You can see that the status is adopted uh, and you know that the owner is this person. If you click on this owner you can actually see the contacts information as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you don't see this owner column, uh, you can actually add it by going to the settings icon up there, selecting the index column to view, and moving the owner column from the right side to the left side, scrolling down to the bottom and clicking save. Uh, we do have a tutorial that walks through how to change and customize the indexes. All indexes in our software are customizable, uh, but that can be found in that tutorial. Uh, so now that you've seen how to process adoptions and manage all your applications, I'm now going to show you how to process adoptions for offline applications and for people, for example, who are at events, come in and adopt the pet, so you may not yet have an application in the system for their pet. So for the case where people just adopt the pet, you don't have an application in the system yet, uh, we're going to walk through that one first. In that case, uh, you're actually able to process the adoption from the pet section. It is very easy to do that. You just go to Actions, Assign Adopter. You can create a new contact if they're not in the system yet. If they're already in the system, you can just type in their name or their email, and you will see you're assigning this person as the adopter for Ember. Click Submit, and again, it will bring up this email screen. It will ask you to upload any documents and set the adoption date, and then you can click Finalize, which will process the adoption uh, for Ember. Fostering works the exact same way. If someone fosters a pet, you can simply go to Action, assign a foster parent, and enter in the foster's information. If the foster ever changes hands, all you have to do is go to Actions, assign foster parent, and it will actually assign the pet to the new foster parent. The old foster parent will be removed from that pet and will actually be placed in the return tab of the application section of your dashboard, letting you know that this pet used to be fostered uh, by person A, and if you go to the foster tab, you will see it is now fostered by person B. Last but not least, if you receive a paper application, you can go add it to the system by clicking on Applications, going to Actions, and clicking Add New Applicant. From here, you can enter in the applicant's information, and you can scroll down to the bottom, select the pets that they're interested in adopting or fostering, and once you select uh, the pet, uh, you click that button, uh, and then you can upload the paper application here, and you go down, you click Create Application Record. When you do that, it's going to ask you what status you want to set the application to. Uh, set it to Initial Review, since you're just adding the application to the system. And now the application will appear for Austin in the pending tab of your application section. So this concludes the tutorial for managing all your application data. 
Uh, if you have any other questions about this, please refer to our frequently asked questions or feel free to contact support and we will be more than happy to set up a quick walkthrough or answer any questions you have.